This is C.F.C. X, reading the curtain of the Mystery Playhouse. Tonight we're visiting the Inner Sanctum for a story by your host, Ring. Open the door and tell us about it, Mr. Host. Good evening, gentle friends of the Inner Sanctum. Welcome through the creaking door for another soothing half hour of sweetness and light. <laughs> oh, I've learned a new trick. Would one of you like to step up here and be sword in hand? What? No volunteer. Well, maybe you're right. The first part, the sawing in half, that's easy. But the second part, the uh, putting together again, I'm still not very good at that. What does a man think of when there's murder in the air? The close presence of death. Does it have matter and substance? Does it generate unseen light waves that touch a man's subconscious? Or unheard sound waves that speak to him when he sleeps? Well, let's listen to I Walk in the Night, written by Emil Tepperman. With Larry Haynes in the role of Peter Lang to tell you this story himself. I don't know if it was the ringing of the doorbell that awoke me. Dragged me back to consciousness out of a deep, heavy sleep. I felt groggy. As if I'd been drugged. My eyes were so heavy, so hard to keep open. That infernal ringing. I stumbled out into the hall. Myrna's room, my wife. They are opposite mine. I knew the door would be locked. We'd quarreled last night while the Judsons were visiting from the house next door. Myrna had made a scene. She went to her room and locked herself in. Please, please wake up in there. As I stumbled down the hall of the front door, I recognized Phil Jetson's voice. Phil and Henrietta live in the house next door, just across the lawn. Please, please. All right. All right, I'm coming. Just a minute. I can't get this open. There. Oh, thank heaven you woke up, Pete. I thought you'd never hear me. What's wrong, Phil? What's that poker for? Henrietta saw a prowler come out of this house. A prowler? What's the matter with you, Pete? You look groggy. Wake up. I don't, I don't know. I feel as if I'd been doped. Uh, what's this about prowler? Henrietta saw him climbing out of Myrna's window. She yelled at me, and I grabbed the poker and came running out. The poker? Well, well, what's what's the... the matter with you? Didn't you hear me? A man was in Myrna's room just now. That's... Great Scott. Myrna's alone in there. Come on. Myrna. Myrna, are you all right? Open the door. She doesn't answer. Phil, are you sure the prowler came out of this room? Yes, and he ran around the house and got away. Uh, look, Pete, uh, have you got a key to this door? No, oh, it's bolted on the inside. And we've got to break it down. Come on, put your shoulder to it. What's more now? <coughs> well, where's the light switch? Oh, here. Here, I've got it. Better not come in, Pete. No, let me in. I've got to see. Myrna. Take it easy, Pete. Oh, Myrna. Strangled. Strangled to death. Myrna. What are the black and blue marks on her throat? This chain on her neck is broken. What is her locket? The one I gave her last Christmas. Killer must have taken it with him. And see here, her fingernails, there's bits of skin under them. She must have struggled and scratched the killer's face, her hands. Why, Phil? Why should anyone want to kill her? Then began the 
began the long torture of the investigation. Detectives swarming over the house. Men in derby hats examining the body of my wife. Measuring the room, searching for fingerprints. And finally, more men who came and carried her away forever. Through it all, Phil and Henrietta sat with me, trying to give what comfort. Oh, Peter, dear, please talk to us. I can't stand seeing you sit there with your head in your hands. It won't bring Myrna back to life. Henrietta's right, Pete. You've got to get a hold of yourself. I know. I know, but... I can't stop thinking about it. Those marks on the throat. The torn chain, the locket gone. Look here, Pete. There's something we have to talk about. Now... Get that dazed look off your face and listen to me for a minute. Yes, yes, Phil. There's a police inspector in Werner's room right now. O'Brien is his name. He'll be coming in soon to question you. Now, you'd better not tell him about the quarrel you had with Myrna last night. I don't get you. It would look bad for you. For me? Oh, well, what do you mean? Phil, you, you don't think that I... Suddenly, I caught my breath. My right hand in my bathrobe pocket had touched something cold. Phil and Henrietta both stared at me. Peter, what's wrong? Phil. Phil, look what I found in my pocket. What is it? Look. A locket. It, it's Myrna's locket. The one that was torn from her throat. Phil. Phil, how could this get in my pocket? Here. Give me that, quick. Oh, Phil. Give it to me. There's it. We're in his locket, all right. You recognize it, Henrietta? Yes. What are you going to do with it, Phil? Get rid of it, quick. Out this open window. Now, if the police find it out there, they'll think the killer dropped it. Phil, it was in my pocket. What what are you looking at, Phil? Your hand, Pete. What? Your left hand. (laughs) I looked down at my left hand. There on my wrist were three long gashes where the skin had been scraped. As if by the fingernails of a woman fighting for her life. So, do, do you think I could have killed her? Nonsense. I don't believe it. You could never do a thing like that, Pete. Couldn't I? How can you be sure? How can I be sure? Peter, please... Don't talk like that. You're, you're making yourself out some terrible monster, but you aren't. Phil and I know you... You can't be like that. I don't know. Maybe I got up in my sleep and, and killed Myrna without ever knowing it consciously. After all, I, I did have that quarrel with her last night. Cut it, Pete. Here comes O'Brien, the detective. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, no, no. It's, it's all right, Inspector. Come in, O'Brien. Mr. Lang is... Very upset. The shock. Yes, I understand. Believe me, Mr. Lang, you have my deepest sympathy. I wouldn't bother you at all at a time like this, but... Uh, Inspector O'Brien was a pink-cheeked, cherub-faced, chubby little man. But his eyes were cold and blue and restless. They kept jumping from Phil to Henrietta to me as he fired his questions at us. Mr. Lang, uh, one more thing. Uh, I understand you had a small party here last night? Oh, no. No, it wasn't a party. Just... Phil and Henrietta and, and, and Ted Hale. Ted Hale? Yes, Mer- Myrna's cousin. Oh, I see. Uh, this Ted Hale, a cousin of your wife, you say? Pardon me, Inspector. Uh, yes, Mr. Johnson. Peter is too easygoing and good-natured to tell you about Ted Hale, but as Peter's attorney, it's my duty to give you certain information. Oh, go ahead. Myrna, Mrs. Lang, owned considerable property in her own right. Recently, I drew a will at her request. In it, she leaves a sizable sum to Ted Hale. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh, I, I, I just thought of something. Well, what is it, Henrietta? Well, Peter was so groggy when he woke up. That's right. He looked as if he'd been drugged. Well, don't you remember last night? Ted Hale went in the kitchen to mix the last round of drinks. Oh, Henrietta, that's ridiculous. On the contrary, it's quite important. Now, uh, tell me, this Ted Hale, what does he do for a living? Why... He works for me in my brokerage job. Uh-huh. To please Myrna, I gave him a job as my confidential secretary. Mm. 
Uh, I suppose you tell me where Mr. Ted Hale lives. I think I'll have a talk with him. Now, all you have to do, Pete, is sit tight. Let O'Brien follow up his lead. So I can't let him arrest Ted Hale. He didn't kill me, and I did. I must have. The locket, he scratches. It's not fair to Ted. As your attorney, I won't let you strap yourself in the electric chair. You go back to your room and get some sleep. Uh, Henrietta, do you mind going back to our house by yourself? Of course not. I'm going to sleep right here in the living room on this couch in case Peter needs me tonight. <laughs> bed in the dark, I kept seeing a thousand pictures. Myrna, her face mottled with strangulation. Phil, always so sure of himself. Henrietta, worried and frightened. And O'Brien, his face grim and his blue eyes cold, going off to question Ted Hale. I must have been close to dozing off when I heard the doorbell faintly, as if in a dream. I tossed about in bed for a moment or two. And then I heard the voices in the living room. Phil's, cold and harsh. And someone else's, loud and angry and frightened. I got out of bed and opened the door. I went down the hall to the living room. I had to know who was in there arguing with Phil. It was Ted Hale. Ted, what are you doing here? Phil phoned me. He told me about Myrna. I called him up. Told him O'Brien would be coming for him. I suggested he come over here and talk it over with me. Pete, don't let them arrest me. You've got to help me. Me? Help you? You know I didn't kill Myrna. Well, I'm not sure. Pete, what? I was here last night, you know. When you had that fight with Myrna. What do you mean? If I'm arrested... I'll tell the police about that quarrel. Phil says I had a motive, but what about you, Pete? You were always quarreling with Myrna. Now, look here, Ted, if you're threatening me... I only want you to help me, Pete. Don't let them arrest me. Hide me. Hide me out till this blows over or until they get the real killer. I think Ted is right, Pete. We should help him. But where? I'll handle it. You have a dark room fixed up in the cellar, haven't you? Yes. We'll stick a cot in there and let Ted hole up for a day or two. Nobody will think of looking for him in this house. Now listen to me carefully, Peter. If Ted Hale is arrested and talks, O'Brien will learn about the quarrel you had with Myrna last night. He'll start digging into things that won't look so good for him. No, Phil, wait. I know you're trying to help me, but if I did it, if, if I did kill Myrna, then there's no use trying to protect me. It isn't right. I'm a dangerous man. But you can't brush it off like that. Do, do you know what it means to lie awake in the night wondering whether you've killed your own wife? Wondering whom I'll kill next? Cut that out. We've got business to attend to. Now, here's my plan. We'll let Ted stay here tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, I'll smuggle him out of the country. Get him passage on a freighter to South America, maybe. You think he'll go? Sure, he'll go. He's scared stiff. But we'll need money. Lots of money. Now, how much have you got in the safe at the office? So about 10000 in cash, but there's a batch of negotiable bonds. They'll do. I'll go down to the office the first thing in the morning and get them out of the safe. Uh, You had the combination? Yes, you gave it to me when you gave me your power of attorney, remember? Oh, yes. Now, don't you worry about a thing. Oh, um, here. Take this powder. Hmm? It's just one of the bromides that Henrietta uses. It'll help you get to sleep. By tomorrow morning, everything will be fixed up. Fine. Almost dawn when Phil left. And it must have been hours later, 
close to noontime when I felt myself being roughly shaken out of a heavy, troubled body. Pete, Pete, wake up. Uh, what? Hey, wake up. Come on, snap out of it. What? Oh. oh. I feel groggy. What was in that powder you gave me? Never mind the powder. Get your eyes open. I've got something to tell you. So what's wrong? What happened? Listen to me carefully, Pete. I went down to the office before business hours this morning and opened the safe to get the money out. Yes? The safe is empty. Empty? The securities are gone. But it can't be. Who else had the combination besides you and me? Only Ted Hale. Oh? Do, do you think that... I'll bet you a dollar to a donut he's gone. Come on, let's check. <laughs> Look, Pete. There's a light in the dark room. You must have gone up early and beat me to it, to the safe. Ted, Ted, you in there? <laughs> Always the optimist, huh? Come on, open it up. Ted. Good heavens. Ted Hale hadn't gone anywhere. He was lying there on a cot. His head was a bloody pulp. It had been bashed in while he slept. The long handled coal shovel which lay there alongside the cut. Great Scott. He's been murdered. We stood there in a narrow dark room, Phil and I, and we looked at each other. There was a strange gleam in Phil's eyes. I tried to read the meaning of that gleam, but he averted his eyes too quickly. He dropped his gaze to my hands. I saw what he was looking at. My hands were black and grimy with coal dust. And on the briny, coal-blackened handle of the shovel was a fresh set of fingerprints. Phil, did I kill him? Did I kill him in my sleep? The same as murder? Phil, I can't stand it seeing the murder. I'm going to get myself up. You'll do nothing of the kind. If you did it, Pete, you're not responsible. You do think I did it? And Myrna, too? I I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Just think, Phil. Maybe, maybe tonight I might kill you. Or Henrietta. There's no telling what I might do. Robert. No, no, Phil. It's hard to believe, but there's the proof. I'm a murderer. I'm dangerous. There's only one thing to do. I won't let you do it. What else is left? Come on. I'm going to help you hide Ted's body. <laughs> How much further, Phil? Oh, there it is. There's the bridge up ahead. Okay. Here, help me with it. We had the body of Ted Hale in a sack with a pair of hundred-pound dumbbells to weight it down. <laughs> Luna's funeral took place the next morning, and I had to endure the condolences of friends and business associates. But Phil and Henrietta stood by me all. It'll be over soon, Peter. Then you can rest. Keep your chin up. I'll get rid of the stragglers. Look. Look who just came in. Where? Oh. That Mr. O'Brien, what does he want, Phil? Take it easy, take it easy. Let me do the talking. I uh, came to pay my respects, Mr. Lang. Oh. Well, thank you, Inspector. No trace of Ted Hale, is there? Sucker. I'm afraid not, Mr. Judson. We're combing the city for him, but I'm afraid he's got clean away. You see, uh, it was marvelous to see how calmly Phil could talk to O'Brien about Ted Hale, knowing all the time just where the body was under that bridge. I glanced at Henrietta. She was watching Phil, too. Yeah. You know, uh, know what I think, Mr. Judson? I think Ted Hale will never be caught. I have a very funny feeling that he's dead. Later 
of that afternoon, I took a taxi cab and went down to police headquarters and asked to see Inspector O'Brien. Well, oh, glad to see you, Mr. Lang. You're looking a little better this afternoon. I feel better, Inspector. I, I feel better because I've come to an important decision. Oh, yeah? Inspector, I've decided to tell you something that'll startle you. <laughs> That's pretty hard to startle an old hand in my business. Go ahead, I'm listening. All right. Inspector, Ted Hale didn't kill Myrna. I killed her. That is, I think I killed her. You think you killed her? Don't you know? It sounds crazy, doesn't it? But I assure you, I'm perfectly safe. Uh, just a second now. You either killed her or you didn't kill her. If you killed somebody, you know it. No, not in this case, Inspector. You see, I, I think I did it in my sleep. Both times. Myrna and Ted Hale, too. Uh, hold on now. I'll get someone to take notes. I suppose you start in the beginning. Tell them the whole story. I saw it awaken me. We found Myrna strangled. The groggy drug feeling I'd had. I said Hale had tried to blackmail me. And I saw it awaken me once more, and we'd gone down to the cellar. We found Ted with his head bashed in. I talked for a while. I'm glad you came to see me, Mr. Lang. Glad you told me all this. You must have had a hard time reaching a decision to come here. Yes. Yes, it was hard, Mr. Lang. Mm -hmm. Phil wanted me to go away. It would have been so easy to go away and let him take care of things. But I, I'd never be able to sleep for fear I'd kill someone else. Well, you needn't worry, Mr. Lang. There won't be any more killings. Not if I'm safely in jail. You're not going to jail. We're going home. What? In those notes the stenographer has taken, Mr. Lang, I have almost enough material to convict the real murder. I need just one more thing. Now, I, you go home and wait. Don't worry. You, you mean I, I, did, I didn't kill Myrna and Ted? Now, you just go along home and take it easy. since I left O'Brien's office and I've taken the time to write down this full account just as I gave it to the stenographer. As I write now, I can look across the lawn to Phil Judson's house. Five minutes ago, I saw Inspector O'Brien and two detectives go in there. The front door is opening now. I can see them coming out. O'Brien first then the two detectives with Phil between them. They've got a handcuff on Phil. And here comes Henrietta. She's running across the lawn. Coming here. Peter. Peter. Coming, Henrietta. Peter, they've taken Phil away. Yes, I saw it all from the window. Oh, darling. Everything went right. Exactly as we planned. Oh, it's pretty easy to see. Hold me tight, Peter. Tight. We can be together now. Forever and ever. I'd have killed a dozen men of field, baby. Oh, I know. And you were clever, Peter. So clever. And the hardest part was getting Phil to cooperate. <laughs> but I knew he'd do anything. <laughs> Friend, what a fool he is. He stepped right in and took over. <laughs> you should have seen O'Brien when I told him the story. I could tell exactly what he was thinking. Here's a poor, innocent sap whose best friend is framing him. Giving him drugs and then making him think he commits murder. <laughs> we can go. Yes. As soon as he's convicted, I'll be free. And we can go away together. Yeah. All right. Huh? But you'll have to cancel that trip. Both of you. <gasps> oh, Brian. You. You heard what we said? Sure did, every word. <laughs> Remember at my office, Mr. Lang, when I told you I only needed one more thing to clinch the case against the murderer? Well, this was it. I faked the arrest of Mr. Judson. And then I sneaked back to see what you'd do about it. <laughs> you did plenty.
And with that familiar sound, we ring down the curtain of Venice Sanctum's I Walk in the Night, tonight's Mystery Playhouse presentation. The creeps, once again, this is PSVX saying, Good night. Sleep tight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.